Well, this morning I'm going to talk to the children. Now, the grown-ups can listen if they want to, but uh, this is, there are young people throughout the congregation, and I want your attention today. And if I see mom and dad not listening, well, you just kind of give them the elbow a little bit, right? <laughs> Don't want anybody to go to sleep. So have you ever heard someone say, remember, I'm talking to the young people now, the children. Have you ever heard someone say, oh, you can do anything you want, right? It's a land of opportunity. We can do anything you want. And uh, they say that to encourage you. Uh, I heard somebody say on the news, well, anybody can be the president of the United States. You can be the president of the United States if you want to be, okay? And sometimes young people, and sometimes older people too, don't really like to try new things, right? Uh, why? Because they don't think they can. Isn't that why we don't try new things? We don't think we can, or maybe we're too busy or something like that. Uh, it won't be easy. And you know, sometimes they're right. Things are not easy. Uh, everyone isn't good at everything. Uh, some young, young people are good at sports. And uh, it just seems to be second nature to them. Or artistry. I know young people that draw beautiful pictures, even at a very young age. And we have children in this church who are very accomplished with music. And, uh, but not everybody can do that, right? You know what? I took piano lessons for eight, eight years, and I never learned to play the piano. <laughs> not everybody can do everything. <laughs> Some are good at music instruments. Some are good singers already at a very young age. Other you, young people can speak, can memorize well, Wait, you're thinking, you can do everything is not really true, right? You can do everything is not really true. But it's said so that it encourages us to go as far as we can. I, somebody says, I can't draw, I can't write, I can't shoot a basketball. I've seen people shoot a basketball for a long ways away and just go right in. I don't know how they do that. I have no idea how they do that. Young people learn, some of them are very good at basketball. And uh, what about me? Somebody says, does that mean that God didn't give me talents and abilities? Does that mean that? No. Let's keep talking. There's a story in Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Jesus went to Bethany, a little town that was close to Jerusalem. And Simon, a person who Jesus had healed, healed from his leprosy, wanted to have a party for Jesus, okay? A celebration for Jesus, a thank you offering for Jesus, okay? And uh, so then Jesus arrives at the party, and during the meal, a special thing happens. A woman named Mary Magdalene came behind Jesus, sort of secretly, shyly. She carried a little container that had perfume in it, expensive perfume. And she broke the jar and poured the perf perfume on Jesus' feet and on his head and in his hair. You know, to us, it seems like kind of a strange thing, right? But I suspect in that culture, this wasn't so extraordinary, really. Uh, <clears throat> Jesus, uh, but in Jesus' time, maybe it, it was okay. But Mary was honoring in Jesus, and she wanted to do it in secret. But guess what happened when the alabaster box was broken? Perfume smelled, spilled, it just spilled out in the room, didn't it? Everybody smelled it. Every, what she wanted to do in secret wasn't so secret anymore, right? She had a very, very thankful heart to Jesus because he had done some very wonderful things for her. And you know, he does very wonderful things for us every day. Children, are you still awake? Yeah, you go to school every day. Who keeps you safe? Who helps you every step of the way? God does, exactly. And uh, you know, he does a lot of things for us. We don't even recognize that he's been, been doing them for us. <laughs> okay. 
So uh, the aroma filled the room and her secret was out. And some at the party thought that she did something kind of silly because this perfume was expensive. It was worth a, it was worth 300 days wages for a person that was working a laborer, okay? 300 days wages, that's expensive. That's almost a year worth of, worth of work, right? She just wasted it, somebody said. But Jesus raised his hand, no, he said. And if you have a Bible, I'd like to have you follow along with me to Mark, the 14th chapter. And if children, if you have a Bible, if you'd look at it too, maybe mom and dad or somebody who's sitting close to you could help you find it. Mark chapter 4. I was, I've been going up to the church school here lately, and I'm amazed that some of the children really know how to, how to, how to find things in the Bible. It's a wonderful thing. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, verses 6 and 8. If you have it, say amen. amen. It says, and Jesus said, let her alone. They were criticizing her for doing this wonderful thing that she was doing. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble you her? She has wrought a good work for me. And now verse 8. She has done, what does it say next? She has done what she could. She's done what she could. She's been, she's come beforehand to anoint my body to the burying. And she was really paving the way for the crucifixion, right? And uh, she was making a highway for the Lord. I think that's wonderful. So uh, she did what she could. Mary wanted to do something for Jesus, something nice for Jesus. And uh, instead of using for herself, she gave it to Jesus. They brought their gifts to Jesus. She did the best she could. These are great words. They're huge. David killed Goliath. But David was not an accomplished soldier when he did that, did it? Was he? Uh, he took a slingshot. He was a boy. He was a good shepherd. He knew how to take care of the sheep and protect the sheep, right? And he'd probably done this many times that way. But he was doing what he could in a time of great crisis for the children of Israel. Joshua 2, verse 6, a young woman saved a family, a whole, whole family, by putting a scarlet cord out the window. She did what she could. So it's not really all about, the, about all the talents we have. It's about doing the best we can. I thought for a while about, about, uh, <laughs> about asking, you, asking the children to count the number of times I said that doing all you could, but the best you could, right? I didn't think about that in time. But what, what, doing what we can, it's about doing the best we can to help others. A story in the latest Review and Herald uh, is in the children's section. I found a little story in there. It's written uh, by Paul Dibdahl. Some of you know who he is. Uh, it's a true story. Johnny was a young boy. He had Down's syndrome. He had a job. He was bagging groceries at the grocery store. His life wasn't easy. How many of the young, how many, young people here today, raise your hand if you're a young person below 18, okay? Now, if you're below, below 85, raise your hand. Okay, are we all awake now? This is a wonderful story. <clears throat> you know, this young boy would never be a football star or a winner in a spelling bee. But he did what he could, and he made a difference. Now I'll tell you what the difference was. He told the sales manager he liked little sayings, little proverbs, right? How many of you like little sayings? You like to read the book of Proverbs? Yeah. I see everybody hand but the children. <laughs> Raise your hand, children. Do you like little sayings? OK. All right. <clears throat> so each day, he said to the sales manager at the store, I'm going to pick one of my little sayings. I'll have my dad print it on little strips of paper. And he tells the, the sales manager, and I'll put my name on the back. And when I bag a little sack of groceries, I'm going to put that little saying in the sack. 
And uh, then he would smile at, at the person whose, whose groceries he was bagging and he would say, I hope you enjoy this little saying. And uh, a few weeks later, there was a problem developed from all of this. Can you imagine what the problem was? The manager of the store explained that he was walking through the store one day, several weeks later, and he noticed that one of the check lines was three times longer than the others. <laughs> this was causing a problem. People were waiting in line, and the other lines didn't have people in them as many, not as many. And uh, so he said, I went to the back of the line and I suggested that the customers move over to the other line so that some of the other checkers would be busy. And nobody wanted to change lines. They didn't, they were just content to wait in the line until their, until their turn came. Nobody wanted to switch lines. The long, the long line was Johnny's line. And they wanted to see his quote of the day. And Johnny was simply doing what he could. We can all do that, can't we? Each of us can do at least that. Perhaps we can help teacher pass out papers. Or maybe we can play on the playground with somebody who's alone, who's not as popular as some of the others. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, you could help your parents who might be tired from a long day. You could uh, walk the dog, maybe. Or uh, what else could you do? Load the dishwasher. Young people will load dishwashers, right? Uh, there's something even better than your talents. Do what you can. Do what you can. Every day, you can do what you can. And the Lord will make great helpers out of all of you. Young people, would you like to join me today and say, yes, Lord, give me a work to do so I can lighten the load of somebody. Somebody else. You all know God wants to make all of us citizens of the heavenly kingdom. Amen. We talked about that a little bit in the Sabbath school class where I was in this morning. Uh, he wants to make all of us citizens of the heavenly kingdom. There is a kingdom on earth, right? It's in our minds. When we give our hearts to Jesus, God is building up his kingdom, right? A kingdom built with lively stones. That's a big idea. And Jesus is coming very soon. You all know that, don't you? Jesus is coming very, very soon. Today we want to de dedicate the children of our church to Jesus. We're living in trying times, a hard time for children to grow up. Each of you has the privilege of choosing to say, yes, Lord. What did I just say? Yes, yes Lord. Okay. Yes, Lord. Even at such a young age.